special meeting of the Scarborough Board of Education. It's Wednesday, June 25th, 2015. May I have the attendance, please? Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mr. Chiazzo? Here. Ms. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Hartle? Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? There are no adjustments. 5.0, new business. Does anyone wish to speak on this agenda item? Come right up if you wish. Seeing none, we will close the open session and move to 5.1. Do I have a motion to approve a revised notice of the school budget cost center summary for the July 7th, 2015 school budget referendum? I have a motion. Whereas the Town Council has further reduced the school board's proposed fiscal year 16 budget by $500,000, and whereas despite the Town Council's instruction to the school board, clarified again by counselors at the June 24, 2015 Town Council meeting, to find this amount of $500,000 as a combination of both reduction in projected expenditures and increased use of available revenue, and whereas the Town Council, by a split 3-3 vote on June 24, 2015, Councilors Babine, Katerina, Donovan voted yes, and Hayes, Holbrook, and Blaze voted no. Rejected first, the council introduced amendment proposing use of $180,000 in school budget revenue surplus, and then subsequently a second amendment proposing the use of the existing $83,789 in school revenue surplus. Despite the council being assured of no less than an additional $100,000 in year-end fiscal year 15 revenue surplus being anticipated, 
And whereas the school board clearly requested the town council's collaboration to minimize what was detailed as the potential program eliminations that might result from such a reduction without the ability to utilize some level of revenue surplus, eliminations that would be considered detrimental by students, parents, and staff, then let it be moved that the school board revise their fiscal year 2016 budget to reflect reductions consistent with those provided to the town council on the 24th of June 2015 so that the voters might be appropriately advised of adjustments made to budget categories by Department of Education Cost Center as required by law. And let it be known that for purposes of complying with this mandated adjustment from the town council, the school board fulfills its duty to the council, however, support of this motion to revise the budget and satisfy this procedural requirement in no way constitutes an expression of agreement with the imposed adjustment. And I have the backups here, the 11 cost centers as required by the Department of Ed. Second. Very good. Is there a discussion? I, I can, do you like to say something? Okay. So the budget that was presented and that was voted on was a level services budget. Budget was reduced by $90,000 before the vote and $500,000 since then. This is not our budget. That's not the number. That's not the amount that our students need to succeed. Our teachers are paid less than their colleagues in surrounding towns and less than many in the state. It's been suggested that we look to our teachers to make up the deficit. Ask them to give up their rights as outlined in their contracts. Our teachers have done that in prior years and never recoup that loss. On the municipal side, employees did agree to freeze wages in one year, but then were paid retroactively and moved along their steps as if the freeze never happened. That's not the same for our teachers. Our per pupil administrative costs are less than almost any town in the state. That's always the battle cry, cut administrative costs. We are one of the lowest payers of administrators in the state of Maine. We do not have excessive administrative costs. Year after year, we put together a responsible budget. It goes to the polls, sometimes it passes, sometimes it doesn't. In the four years I've been here, we've had to make cuts after a failed referendum. After telling everyone that I know and asking parents and supporters of the schools to get out and vote because the cuts will be detrimental, I then have to turn around and say, we just need to get a budget passed. Just, just go vote yes so we can get it. I'm done with that. Now I'm going to vote no too low. Anyone else? Chris? I'll go then, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I had some prepared comments tonight, but um, quite frankly, I'm still trying to wrap my head around exactly what happened last night. Um, since February, we've been working very closely with the council. It's been a very open process. that every ample opportunity to discuss individual issues with the budget, with uh, general principles, with uh, approaches to budgeting. We've had ample opportunity to discuss issues associated around the budget. We agreed collectively the first budget was a level services budget. By definition, that means that's the amount of money that we need to continue everything that we have this year without improvements and without the requirements that the council stipulated of no layoffs and maintain services. So we fulfilled that obligation collectively and collaboratively and went to the voters. And it was clear the voters felt it was too high. And, and that's the reality of the situation and we reacted to that. And yet again, we collaboratively approached the council and said, you've seen the budget, you agree with what's in it, you know it's level services, please don't cut arbitrarily. We think 250000 is a reasonable number. We can accommodate that without impacting programming and without affecting people. And the council decided 500000 was the right number for whatever reason. I still haven't understood quite why that was, but okay, so we have that to work with. So we did our due diligence and we did our job. We put our nose to the grindstone. We went through line item of the budget. We went through everything. We culled out $320,000 worth of expenditures that are going to hurt. They're going to hurt staff. They're going to hurt 
programming, but they weren't going to hurt kids as much as directly as some of the other issues that we put on there. And we went to the council again and said, help us, please. Help us. It's in the best interest of the town to do this. We don't want a, collaborative, a, a combative approach anymore. You have the ability to help us. Let us use the revenue that you've designated for us. We can support that. It's not perfect, but we listen to the voters. We can agree to that. We can move forward with that. But that was rejected outright, both by, the, by actions and by the vitriolic comments towards the council, excuse me, towards the board from members of the council. So I'm really trying to understand how we lost that collaborative approach that was working, seemed to be working very well, processing through. And now we're right back again to a combative approach of drawing lines and, and energizing rhetorical statements and, and battling it out. Um, I, I'm not on the school board to gut the system. I, I refuse to do that. I, I think this budget is, I think the reduction in the tax burden as much as I didn't like it, I understood it, and I understood the response to the voters. I didn't understand what happened last night and why it happened that way. We had a solution. We had an equitable solution that didn't impact programming, that would have kept everything that the council wanted. The redu reduce the tax amount by 500000 reduce our surplus to zero, <clears throat> not lay people off, not impact core services. Work for the municipal side, now suddenly we're expected to do something different. So I, I can't support this budget. I, I mean, so this, is a, this is a procedural vote. We're obligated to do this. Even if we don't like the budget, we can't reject it. It's not our, our prerogative to do that, or even we don't have the authority to do that. So I'm going to vote for this to move it to the voters, but I, I cannot, in all good consciousness, support a budget like this. It's way too dramatic. It's, it's, it, quite frankly, is punitive when it doesn't need to be punitive. There's a solution that was presented by a counselor that would have gotten us, gotten everybody. That's the compromise that we needed. And it wasn't accepted. So I, I can't support it. I, I mean, I'm going to vote yes here to move it through. But I, I certainly agree. I, I'm not going to vote yes for a budget like this. I think that's, uh, that's the worst thing that could happen to us. Christine? I, too, will vote yes to move it forward. But I find this disheartening that we're going to do this again, again. Um, and when I look down at this list of things that are you know, on the table here to cut, one of them is a club at the high school called the Ecos Club that came into the presentation to us a little more than a year ago. And this is just showing how some of these things that we're looking and, and going to be cutting are, are things that really do add value to our students and to the society and to the school and to the community as a whole. But they did a presentation <coughs> for us, very nice presentation about getting styrofoam out of the waste stream at the schools, particularly the high school. But you know, after a year's worth of going back and looking at prices and costs and things like that, we decided that as a board, the right decision was to remove styrofoam pay the little bit extra, and it was because these students came forward to us with an idea of how to preserve their future in this world, to how to save their planet, how to do the right thing and make the right call. And, and here we are, we're going to cut the club that helped us go to this point and to, to realize that we were doing things wrong and that maybe we should look at how we operate differently. And, and this, this makes me sad. You're gonna cut, we're going to cut the Civil Rights Club at you know, the Wentworth School. What is this telling our kids? It's, it's basically telling our kids that all of these things that we put up here don't matter to them. Doesn't, not important. This wasn't going to teach you something. But in reality, we know that it did teach them something because they came forward with their ideas and they showed us that it taught them something. And it's, and it's sad. And I know at the polls I'll be voting no too low. Yes. Um, <clears throat> to say I was disappointed in the way the town council meeting went last night is a complete understatement. I left there completely discouraged in this town. And so 
I come here tonight with, with very mixed emotions, and I've had this internal struggle for weeks, I'm sure all of us have. I want a budget to pass. I have kids in the school system. The teachers that are teaching my kids are unbelievable, and we need to start supporting them. And, but I'm tired of the school department being the tax relief program for this town. It's just not okay. And my husband and I teach our kids to stand up when somebody's bullying you. And last night, that's what I felt happened. And so in order for me to do what I think is right, which ultimately is what I teach my kids, I will not, I will pass it through, do the procedure that we need to do, but I will not vote for this budget. This is not a budget that produces strong kids and, and strong members of our society. They are a part of this community, and I feel like they continue to just be referred to as a number or as the school board has this issue or the town council has that issue. And we're talking about children's education. And I'm tired of, of taking it, and I think it's time for people to stand up and say, no, it's too low. We're doing a disservice to our kids. Okay. I, too, am very disappointed in what transpired last evening on, on several levels. And I've, I've mentioned this before with regards to our state government. What are we teaching our children? We try to teach our children to work together, to learn to compromise, to come together to solve a problem. Trying to teach our children not to be bullies. The demeanor of our town council meeting last evening was not something I would hope that our children will see. And it's not about the school board. All the rhetoric is directed at the school board. The school board does this, the school... It's our children uh, whom we are trying to educate who are going to feel the brunt of this budget. Do you know what's left, folks? The reading club and the homework club at Wentworth. The Jim Dandies are still at Wentworth, but they're privately funded. And at the middle school, we will have a math club, and we will have a student council. That's it. That's it. As mentioned before, at the high school, we, uh, the band, the chorus, the ecos, the jazz band, the key club, mock trial, model UN, natural helpers, oak hill players, who will be able to fund their play from gate receipts. Education is more than books and tablets. It's more than a teacher. It's all of the experiences that our children have both in and out of school. And right now, the only place that they're going to have an extra experience outside of the classroom is at the high school. So nine years they're going to go to school and they, if they're interested in the math club or they want to be in the reading club or they join student council, they'll have an extra activity. So what are our children going to do after school? What's going to happen to those high school activities when the students have not been exposed to any of it prior to getting there? I was hoping that someday we would have an academic reputation to equal our athletic reputation. It's not going to happen. And you know what? The athletic reputation is going to suffer as well because the children are not going to be prepared until they get to be freshmen. 
citizens of this town, we need to think about the children. They are citizens as well. I'm going to support the budget tonight because it has to go to you. But if you don't come out and vote, you only have yourselves to blame. 15,000 voters, 3,000 students, 1,500 came to vote. Add it up. I want to be clear that in all of our hours and hours of meetings, we've been very respectful of the voters' result that said it was too high. We cut $320,000 additionally out of a level services budget. I think that that's respectful. We did what was asked. $500,000 was asked by the council. We can make up that difference with surplus. It was the perfect solution. It's disrespectful to our kids and to our teachers to say not good enough. The work you did is not good enough. The amount you saved is not good enough. Really, and I see no reason besides spite. Because it's disrespectful to say to our teachers who are under contract, you make up the difference. You pay out of your pockets every single year for every single class, for every single student in your class, money that they go to Staples and spend out of their pockets that we can't provide. Our supply list is so bare bones. I already have the list for Wentworth for next year, things that I need to send to supply for the classroom, not even just my own child, but things to be in the classroom. That never happened when I was in school. It certainly didn't happen when most voters in this town went to school. You showed up and the school provided. We are being asked to supply tissues, hand sanitizer, pencils, markers, crayons, whiteboard markers, all things that are used for the classroom, that are classroom supplies. Not just for my child to use at home to do projects. That's understandable. This is stuff in the classroom that is not provided because we have such a slim, no room for error budget for supplies or anything else. And it's disrespectful to our kids to say, you're not worth an extra $180,000 in use of surplus, even though it's there. The money is there. The money is school-designated surplus that has been saved by the school department. The money's there to not decimate after-school activities for kids. And it's not just fun and games. It is not just all fun and games. If a kid doesn't get to try out for a play in the middle school, they're never going to take the chance in high school. If it's a shy, reserved kid, they're just never going to do theater. They're never going to try out for chorus. They're never going to be in computer club. It's not why we're on the school board. Laptops, everyone wants to talk about laptops, let's talk about it. Every year, each phase level gets a technology refresh. It was the high school's turn. A typical refresh is $500,000. The laptops came in now under $800,000. The total CIP budget, which the laptops are a part of, is lower this year than it's been in years. The laptops are not in the budget we voted on. The laptops are covered by a CIP budget. It is not different than every other year. We were able to scale back on facilities this year and increase the technology portion of CIP to make up that difference. 500,000 would have been due to the high school and a technology refresh this year anyway. Just like has happened in years past, last year was Wentworth's turn, Coincidentally, also when Wentworth was being constructed and opening, so all the technology fell neatly into that package. This is not new. That's the way CIP works. There is not a separate referendum on what is in a CIP budget for the school or the town. Unless it's a fire truck or one particular item. It's not different. We need to be respectful to our kids. We were respectful to the voters who said it was too high. We lowered it. We need to be respectful to our kids and our teachers. And I will not support this budget. Yes, Jackie. Uh, I'm going to stand and I'm going to applaud <laughs> our leadership. I hope that you'll convey my thanks to your staff. I know they're not here. <coughs> they are the greatest. 
We are so fortunate. And they are going to make do. And we know they will. But I just weep for our children because they are going to suffer. Um, I, I just, think Chris and then you, Joe. I just have a mind of two seconds. It's just a point of clarity. Is I just want it to be on the record that the um, expenses, the gross expenses for the school are currently at 3.1%. 3.1%. Um, it should also be noted that the municipal side of, of our, our full budget is at 4.72%. Yet we continue to be <clears throat> told that we're the excessive spenders in town and that we're out of control. Again, we are currently at 3.1% gross expenditures. Um, it, it strikes me as I'm sitting here listening to the comments of my fellow board members and from councilors last night that um, we're, we're beginning the cycle yet again of disconnecting school and, and town. And uh, that's really a shame because we made a lot of progress so far. We really did. And uh, there are those on both sides who want to continue that process. And we really as a town need to continue that process. But this, this, this whole situation is playing out right now between the two governing bodies, but ultimately it boils down to the people of Scarborough and what they want and how they want us to govern. We've got enough confrontation and combative natures in Augusta and Washington really hate to see that come to Scarborough. You know, I thought we're better than that. We need to be better than that. We are better than that. And we, we, we lower ourselves to the lowest common denominator when we have discussions about, well, the police department gets a 2.5% raise, but the teachers need to take a, a pay cut. It's the town. It's everybody together. That's the thing we've got to all focus on. And and, and, it, and it does take a collaborative effort from the council. They, they, what I saw last night was retrenching. We got ours, our budget's closed, we're finished, now we're going after you. That's old school stuff. We're, we're back to square one again. And, and, I, and I hope the voters look past that. Don't, uh, don't reward that behavior because it just encourages more behavior like that. Stand up, say, enough, stop fighting, work together, find a solution. We had one. Why didn't it get passed? That's the question. That, to me, that's really the question. What broke down last night? I, I know the people are frustrated with taxes. We all are. But, but taking the time to ferret through the information is, 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 is difficult. We're all elected here. You, you, you trusted us to represent you. You trusted us to make these decisions. We hired some really smart people, guys. They're pretty good. They kind of know what they're doing. So to have somebody who just shows up one night a year and looks at a couple line items and says, I think you've got a million bucks in there that could come up. Any, any good businessman could manage that budget. That's, that's not reality. And, and the council needs to be strong enough to say, you know what, that's not the case. And we need to be strong enough to say, you know what, we gotta work with the council and we have to understand the give and take. But the voters ultimately have to support the process. It didn't happen the first time around. And, and I, I find myself in the precarious position, the first time in three years, of saying, don't support a budget that I just spent the last six years of my life, six months of my life trying to craft. But I don't want you to, I, I want you to take everything that I've done, that we've done, that everybody's done, and throw it out the window. But don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, guys, because we've got to come back and get this resolved. So we've got to stay focused on being collaborative and cooperative, but we cannot, as citizens of this town, allow this behavior to move forward and allow this pattern to continue. Jackie? Yes, one more point. 
the, the initiative that the town council has passed with regards to the budget includes a piece that says that should the state increase our GPA, general purpose aid, over and above what we have put into our current budget, that excess will be used to reduce this year's taxes. Now, what that means is this, that the school department will start out with a deficit actually before the budget even starts next year because what has transpired in the past is if we happen to get extra money after the budget is passed, then it's been used to reduce the subsequent year's budget. We're not going to have that opportunity. The council has already said what they're going to do with that money that's supposed to be earmarked for education. That's also something that has never happened in this town. People need to know that. Okay, so my turn. So when we started meeting with the Finance Committee back in January, we set our goals. And those goals were respectful, be able to say what you think, not be disrespectful to each other, be honest, and also collaborate. Let's make it transparent. Since last year and the year before, there wasn't enough clarity. So we joined together as two bodies, and we worked that way, I felt, all the way up until really last night. And honestly, I agree with you. I, I don't know quite what happened there because we weren't asking for a lot of help here. It was a small amount, really, that, that we could have collaborated with. This, what we had put together was a very lean budget. This is a school district that has been lean for years. Years this has been a lean town. I went looking for, well, where could we, maybe we could find a few, you know, support staff who, instead of cutting everybody's paycheck, we could, maybe there's a few people, because I'm used to being in other systems where these people are in place. And, and what I learned is, they don't, they're not here. Those people are not here. We use our ed techs to do their ed tech job, and by the way, go into the phone, because we don't have secretaries everywhere. So you run back and forth between helping those special needs kids or regular ed kids who need extra help, Title I or whatever it is, come on back and get these phone calls, because they're coming in at any minute. I never heard of such a thing. I never worked anywhere with it, and I've been in a lot of school systems, you know? So it just, it blows my mind that our, our community is not aware of this. There are educators who know this. Educators who live here, work elsewhere. Educators who live here and work here. This is known, but it, it's, it's really unfortunate that we're at a place now, tonight, where we're looking to really disassemble things. Things that will be very hard to get back. And that is a sad situation, not just for our children and our families, for this community, for this community. Is this the kind of community you want to live in? That's, that's the thing. You know, I have people contacting me, either by phone or email, saying, I just moved here a few years ago. I thought this was a good school system. Now, I guess I'm learning differently. What? what? 
do I really want to stay here? Yeah, one young woman came from Falmouth to here with her three little kids, really. <laughs> you know, I, I told her, you made a good decision because it is a wonderful town. <coughs> and we have had good school systems. Um, but this is, this is really turning things back. As far as those computers goes, those were essential. We put the money in CIP. It was less than we've asked in years to go in CIP. It's where it should be. When we did the research on that, there was five years ago, now it's six, six years ago, there was 24,000 students in Maine high schools with computers. What this town, how can that be? This is Scarborough. I thought this is where, <laughs> where people want to be because the great school system, it's just, I, I just blew my mind that we hadn't gotten those yet. They're essential for learning. They're the key now, the key tool. As far as um, fees go, some people think our, our parents are not paying fees. They're paying a lot of fees. They're paying their taxes and they're paying the fees. When you add up all the fees for the sports, for any activities we have, for the booster clubs, for getting the equipment, they're paying over and above. What happened? What happened to that belief that we all share in supporting education? I have to believe that people out there do care about education, do care about what's going to happen to our schools, and do come out to vote on the 7th. This is not the budget we this is not the budget we all agree to with the council, really, up until last night. So it, you, you've got to come out and vote, and you know I'm, I'm, I will very likely be, be voting no to the law. It's, it's not our budget. It's been taken from us, hijacked. And it's, it's, some, it's somebody else's budget now. That's how I feel. So, anyway, I'll get off. <laughs> All done? So we have a motion? A motion, please. And a second. second. We had our second. All in favor? All the reluctantly? All in favor? Six. Point O. Do we have a motion to go into executive session pursuant to MRSA 405-6A for the purpose of discussing employment agreements with non-bargaining unit central office staff not to return to public session? So Second. Very good. Any discussion? No? All in favor? Six. Very good. We will not re be returning. <coughs> Thanks for your support.